So another bad week in court for the MAGA crowd. Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the MAGA crowd. So Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump had bad weeks in court last week. Let's start with Marjorie Taylor Greene, whose position on the ballot is being challenged in Georgia. Greene had sought to have a federal judge throw out an action filed against her in a state administrative proceeding to essentially have her removed from the ballot as being ineligible to serve in Congress. The basis for this argument is, of course, the 14th Amendment, which states clear as day that if you supported an insurrection against the United States after having taken the oath of office for a member of Congress, you are ineligible to serve in Congress. Green, it turns out, as it turns out with all these MAGA politicians, was up to her eyeballs in January 6th, both in the planning and in the execution of what she, Mark Meadows, Donald Trump, and everybody else involved knew was going to be a downright invasion of the Capitol. The more information that comes out in the form of texts and evidence that has been found by the January 6th Commission shows just the extent to which this was a wholesale coup against the United States of America. In fact, committee member Jamie Raskin has pointed out that there's even evidence that the Secret Service was involved in it, having been co-opted at their leadership level by the Trump administration. This was the closest the United States has ever come to having our government deposed, and that includes when the British burned down the Capitol in the War of 1812, and when the Confederates battled against the Union. Well, a federal judge struck down Marjorie Taylor Greene's effort to be protected from this administrative process. And so she was required to testify, much to her consternation. Most of her testimony, as it turns out, ended up with, with her claiming that she didn't know and didn't remember. But amazingly enough, it appears the prosecutor has really done their homework in this case. For example, she claims that one of the organizers of the January 6th insurrection, Anthony Aguero, was a distant friend, somebody she barely knew. Well, as it turns out, that testimony is contradicted by deleted evidence from her Twitter account. Oh my God, that people are held accountable for the things they said in the past. What's more is she posted a video of herself with Aguero, claiming that he's one of her best friends, so much for being a distant friend, someone she barely knows. Then you have her testimony that she never claimed that Nancy Pelosi was a traitor to the country. Well, oh my God, we once again have Twitter coming to the rescue here, clearly showing that for the few answers she did give, she was lying. But the truth of the matter is most of the questions she responded to with, I don't know or I don't recall, which as we know is a pretty common tactic for someone else who had a bad week in court, Donald Trump. As we know, the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, has filed a civil action against Donald Trump and his companies based upon evidence that they used fraud to obtain loans and then that they used fraud to lower their taxes. Now, James, the state attorney general, isn't in a position to file criminal charges against Donald Trump, but she is able to file a civil action, which, as we know, has a lower burden of proof than does a criminal action which should be something that really concerns Donald Trump. Well, as it turns out, it does. And as a result, he's done everything to stymie this lawsuit, to avoid answering questions, avoid being deposed, avoid providing documents that are requested. And you have to understand, answering these types of requests are part of the process in a civil case. It's called discovery. And both sides are required to respond to the requests of the other side. Well, finally... Someone has called Donald Trump on his BS. New York Judge Arthur Angeron has decided to fine Donald Trump himself $10,000 a day until he turns over the documents that have been requested by the Attorney General. Now, Donald Trump's lawyers in court claims that they'd looked for these documents and don't have them. But the judge wasn't buying that defense, saying that their claims of having looked for these documents were flimsy at best. What's more and is kind of little noticed in this lawsuit, is that while Donald Trump is claiming that he personally does not have the documents, he's not necessarily disputing the fact that his companies may have the documents. While Letitia James has been going forward trying to gather information on Donald Trump himself, she's also been getting this evidence through his companies as well. 
So if Donald Trump believes that he's succeeding in blocking this litigation by stalling, well, number one, the judge isn't having any of that. And number two, James might be getting what she needs anyway from the companies. For her part, James says she's approaching moving ahead with filing a lawsuit against Donald Trump and his companies. Now, you might be wondering what's going on with the criminal charges against Donald Trump as well, because, of course, the Manhattan district attorney was looking at doing that. Well, as we know, when Alvin Bragg, the new district attorney, came into office this year, he was somewhat less enthusiastic about pursuing charges against Donald Trump than his predecessor, Cyrus Vance Jr. In recent comments, though, it appears as if he's kind of backing down on that position and may be persuadable as new evidence is coming to light. We'll have to see if James's pursuit of this case ultimately pushes Alvin Bragg to end up filing criminal charges as well. Well, I have to say it's hard for me to feel bad for these MAGA leaders as they're having their bad times in court. And in fact, if you want to hear about some other times when they've had trouble in court, check out this video over here. Truthfully, for the past year, Donald Trump has been suffering one defeat after another in court, and I'm pretty sure he's not enjoying it. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.